Okay. Okay. I think all your team members on the call, and oh, you are ready okay. to start. Fine. Yes. If you allow me, can I share my screen? Yes, please. And just to let you know, when you start, your timer will also start. You will have six minutes for presentation, three minutes for Q and A. Thank you very much. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Okay, so let's begin. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we are Alfonso, Ramses, Jorge, and um, Beatriz. And we shall present you BC4IC. The problem is the institutional life harms children, but children should grow up in a family em environment. If not possible, the state assumes, it's not possible the state assumes the responsibility to provide protection and assistance. Institution lack instruments to properly safeguard children and coordinate among themselves. When raised there, they suffer from structural neglect and abuse. The object is to provide less time with better quality of life. Thank you. And the solution is an effective remedy in a blockchain-based legal instrument that identifies stakeholders, structures legal information, interoperates agencies, facilitates oversight, and gives children back their voices. This new legal paradigm ensures every child is well accounted for empowers effective and efficient operation for institutional stakeholders, shares the asset of trustful legal information, and gives children the opportunity to be informed and regain their voice. It's interesting and important to show you that there is a strategy. It's not only a tool, but it's a tool for institutional development. We found out that using the icons of Hyperledger, it was much, much easier to engage different partners that do know not about development. We forged alliance already with the state of Jalisco. It's one of the 32 states of Mexico. And we have in writing, they're willing to cooperate. And we are in the track already for UNICEF um, funding development. Um, we have developed an in initial instrument that you show it in the demo. And then we'll have with the institutions workshop for user-centered design thinking, development of the tool together during a year, that's our project. And that's the instrument uh, development in the roadmap. What is the business architecture? We have identity, child legal record, agencies interoperability, government and society oversight, child participation. We have the layers of software for infrastructure, we began and we sold uh, many of, of the difficulties, even in the rocket chat, uh, for BAF, okay, and mini cubes with bots already. But then we wanted to give you a brief uh, description of the functionality and the architecture, and we use fabric samples straight from straight from 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 the page. Uh, the programming would be done along the year with the workshops in the institution. The roadmap is there. We'll have workshops, pilots, workshop, pilot, and we'll continue during, during a year. This is an example of, of the demo. We define the screens for identity to register both N and A are the, the children, to define the consortium of agencies, so that we can, using this icons of, of Hyperledger fabric documentation, we explained to the institution and the stakeholders, and we will teach them, okay? We will teach them what we're doing as we're doing it so that they can work with us and they can appropriate the instrument. So when the instrument is finalized, it belongs to all. It's not something that it's imposed on the user but it is developed by the user, okay? So we have all the, all, the, uh, all the screens, I'll go fast. And the interesting thing is, as we go through the screens, okay, we can show 
directly. What happens once you hit one of the options? In fact, I think this is another idea that we came across in the hack, which is we should do and we would like to do a drag and drop, click and launch hyperledger fabric, okay? Like Scratch of Mitch Resnick, okay? But with, with hyperledger. That would engage the institutions. Here you have, for instance, the child legal record, which is something quite interesting, okay? Because it has an inner logic of issue, rules, facts, evidence, and um, with this, one institution can bring another institution and have the four that are needed for the project. Among many, we are beginning, and this year we'll have four institutions. Um, now, we need the screens. Ramses, you have, you have the floor. Francis? So, hi. Hi, everyone. Okay. Well, um, uh, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, we do. You tell me when you, when you want the no, next. Okay. Well, uh, in technology, we can. Okay. It's clear. Okay. Well, well um, technology, we choose that technology to, to share this information about the, the blockchain. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna use we're gonna use uh, um, we're gonna use a uh, different peers and different and different organizations. In this case, for example, we are getting uh, we are getting uh, we are installing this for this uh, DLT into the the Linux Ubuntu Linux using this data. Well, in this case, uh, we're gonna use uh, the framework the framework uh, Bath blockchain automation framework uh, because it's a blockchain automation framework that has it has uh, the all the has the all the all uh, IRB hey, uh, the DevOps uh, hey, use. Um, hey, sorry to interrupt. It's six minutes up for your demo. Okay, um, we'll, we'll go fast to the screens. The screens are there. The call. Hey there. Hey. So you're, whenever you are ready, your time will start. You will have six minutes for presentation and your demo, three minutes for Q&A. We'll hard stop at every um, interval. Mike, do you want to start this or not? Uh, yeah, no, Mike. go ahead. Let's just keep this all uh, uh, on, the on the presentation only here. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, start from our, our PowerPoint. We didn't quite um, work like crazy, didn't quite get there. Apologies, you know, uh, we've got uh, some stuff working, but not 100% of where we're trying to go. Um, but let me show you from the diagram to uh, have uh, run the UI for it and so on. Mm -hmm. Your time starts now. Okay. So, uh, well, you gotta share my screen first. Okay, so where's my, where's the diagram? Hello, there it is. Okay, so if you look at this, what we created is a, a, a first of all, our environment is object oriented, uh, where the uh, classes and objects are on the blockchain, and they, you, they're referenced by uh, unique object IDs that are created, and those will we use for the keys as you would in a regular key database. So as a result, we can do all sorts of interesting inheritance type capability. So what we create is uh, accounts, and uh, we created a concept of a part and concept of an assembly. So parts and assemblies, and they have certificates and all this data actually exists. And then you would be able to create this type of thing where a part becomes an assembly and some would become a product where a product is still an assembly. And the idea would be that you would then be able to trace backwards from the customer account all the way backwards and forwards from any supplier forward for in case we ever had to do a, um, a recall or anything like that. So user interface to it. So the concept of the user interface is, and by the way, guys, you can jump in real quick. We only have a couple minutes, so feel free. Um, so the end of the idea is you have, uh, you're viewing it from the vendor. So you, the idea is you're you, you're, you're a company in a B2B situation. You've got vendors, you've got customers. So you look from the vendors, look for the customers, and then this rolls so that the vendor tree, if you move up and down the supply chain, you always 
C1 up, one down. And that would be the idea. And then you would say to your vendor, I want to order an assembly and you order it. They'll send it to you. You want to order a part, they'll send a part to you. So it gives you a list of what's going on. You can also create locally. If you're a, a, your own vendor, you also want to produce for your own parts and assemblies yourself. An assembly is an assembly of parts and other assemblies. Okay. That's 100% of it um, on the user interface side. Obviously, though, to be clear, we obviously want to do more, but we can't, we did what we can. Okay. So um, the, uh, uh, from the, uh, we did run node. Um, come on, get over there. Oh, I can't share. I can't get my screen to actually show it on that screen. You guys are seeing my screen, yes? Yes. Okay. I can't share my second screen. Bummer. Uh, it won't. It won't slide over. Great. Okay. Um, Try share screen. Second screen with Zoom itself. Wait a second, I might get it. Here we go, got it, okay. So um, real quickly, the way we actually run is um, um, with the invoke script. Um, however, we created our own uh, method type, object sends, you're sending to a method, uh, sending to an object rather. There's a, an account object, so all objects in accounts, you send it to the object, you send the method you have in mind and the parameters for it. So for example, um, I'm going to make an assembly and Here's my object send. Here's the account I'm sending it to. Here's the uh, make assembly method itself. And then here's the arguments to it, which would be I'm making a, an asset type, I'm making car assembly, I'm giving it a part name, a SKU number, certificate, et cetera. You make as many as you want, and then you would actually have, uh, and you can uh, create a vendor relationship by making multiple vendors. So that was the idea. If you're a vendor, you would create yourself an account here. And then um, you would be able to set your uh, supply chain up and down by using simple set vendor, uh, set customer. And so basically you walk up and down, then you have a thing called, I'll show at the bottom here, a message called um, order create. And apologies that it's a, a mess like this to the, you know, cause doing the command line, but that's what we're doing. And you would send up the buyer, su supplier and so on, okay. Real quickly, the source code is all up on GitLab and it's public for all of the classes. The, uh, our core system, of course, is uh, at the moment proprietary. It's someday it'll be open source. And so these are the classes you can see for the Bosch Hackathon, as we called it. And you have an assembly asset. And I just pulled up some of the methods and the, the files that give you the method. So here's class vendor, you would create an order. Um, it would receive a request, you do a delivery. Um, Make a, if you're a manufacturer, you're going to make parts and assemblies, and you set up your relationship. Then this just gives you the history of this gives you the picture of it, so you can get this at any time. And the same thing. Um, so here's a part, same type of thing. I create a part; it's going to be an object, and then I can add new parts, and I can sell the parts. And um, that's that's basically what you'd want to be able to do with it. Same thing with an assembly. Okay, an assembly, of course, would be assembly of parts, an assembly of other assemblies. So you have these arrays where each part has a, a vendor account, the object handles reference the objects. This is an all object or an environment, by the way. And these are all dynamically loaded. All of these classes are built independent of both the chain code, which is what we call our class manager infrastructure and independent of Hyperledger Fabric itself. Um, the uh, if farther back in this, this is how you do uh, dynamic class loading. Um, let me see if I can find one real, here you go. And you literally just say load class, you give it the name of the, the path and the name to where it is. Now, obviously, these are done as um, file name, but this could just usually be a URL. Oh, so time, time's up. So, Team Alpha is on the call. Aparna and Krishna, whenever you are ready, you are, you'll get six minutes for presentation and three minutes for QA. Aparna is going to present. Okay, your time will start now. Yes. <clears throat> so good morning to everyone present here. Uh, we are here with an idea of innovative stock exchange solution using hyperlogic fabric that is blockchain technology. Uh, so we are team Alpha, uh, we are a couple of members, uh, myself, that is Aparna, and one of my colleagues, Krishnakant Pilna. 
so our problem statement lies under the domain of social impact that is financial empowerment specially so talking about the stock exchange system a uh, stock exchange system is a exchange where stock brokers and traders can buy and sell uh, the assets the assets can be in the form of equity stocks bonds or other securities uh, which are present so many a trade basically in a stock a stock exchange system is a us in simple terms it can be termed as a transfer of stocks by buyer that is end users basically and the, many of the indices which are present uh, uh, till date they were uh, you know recording all the transaction history in the form of paper so some of the indices have shifted from physical transfer of digital assets to uh, digit uh, uh, from physical transfer to digital transfer and while shifting to dig while digitizing themselves there has been many malpractices involved uh, as we can see today uh, in stock exchange stock broker is a registered investment advisor who provides investment management services and who is responsible for execution of transactions in return for a commission so he takes a commission and he carries out all the transactions of uh, his clients the limitations of the current stock exchange system what we have surveyed are that that in today's market system all the transactions are done via stock brokers that the end users cannot perform the transactions directly they need the help of stock brokers who perform their transactions on their behalf and due to which this stock brokers took the advantage and many discrepancies and malpractices are faced by the end users some of these malpractices include overcharging of the brokerage rate they overcharge uh, immensely on the end users or, or their clients and they do not share the complete data with the authorities so the authorities may include like bse nsc or any higher authority uh, for the stock broker so these are also the cases available where customers are duped so in order to bring transparency we we have come up with a solution which uses blockchain technology so our solution to this is we will create a consortium where the central authority will be admin so these uh, uh, admin can be the uh, authority like bsc nsc as such and only the trusted brokers and the agencies of the organization will be added to the consortium and they will issue and we will issue them a private key and a certificate now all the end users that are uh, the users like uh, us who perform trade uh, can use this brokerage uh, broker agency and we will be added as a node on this blockchain now this transaction will be stored now whatever transactions will be performed will be stored on the shared ledger of the same channel that is if two people are sharing a same broker then they will be on the same channel and all their transactions will be stored on one ledger so using hyperledger fabric we can create many such private channels uh, each for uh, individual broker and the different brokerage agencies so that uh, the data will not be revealed to the other brokerage agencies so that there will be the competition which is there in the current system as well so our system will take care of it and uh, the shared ledger will access will be accessed by central authority as well so that the central authority can keep a watch that there are no frauds occurring and they can uh, figure out that where the data leak is coming from now the solution architecture will be explained by krishnakant uh, hello good uh, first of all good morning to all the viewers and uh, i'll take i'll take the first one can you be little louder hello yeah uh, yeah so i'll take uh, yes yes yeah from here uh, as per, uh, as upon explained like uh, we can use we can easily use crypto crypto materials generated by uh, our hyperledger uh, using cryptin tool as a digital assets because after all shares are digital assets which are transferred from one person to another person so uh, our, from our proposed solution uh, we, uh, we are we are proposing that um, the we will create a we will create a consortium from uh, from the top entities uh, as admin and uh, by the brokers will be uh, will be their nodes and will be the organizations and the user user of the broker will be their uh, nodes so we will keep a shared ledger can you be a little louder i i am not able to hear you properly i don't Hello. know about the other members yeah sorry about yeah you are better now yeah, yeah please go ahead better by now. the way it's a time's up so, so how many time is up sorry 
Okay, just give him a, give him an additional thirty seconds. Uh, can you just wrap up real quickly? Yeah, sure. I'll just share my screen. Uh, Apna, can you just uh, hold it out? Hello. Yes. I'll share your screen. I'll yes, show yes. the demo of Hyperledger Fabric, which I've created locally. Uh, I've created a demo uh, for. Uh, yes. Yeah, this is this is uh, this is Hyperledger Fabric network, which uh, we, uh, which we have created, in which uh, this uh, we are transferring amount uh, some amount from uh, John to Sam. Okay. Just a minute. I will show. I will showing it into the network. Okay, so the transition has been invoked, and you can uh, she uh, say it into the. This is happy to have explorer UI. Uh, the, ex the extra block has been created. The block data can be seen. Uh, the block data can be seen from here, and uh, this is a prehash, and also the, ti uh, the timestamp can be seen. So yeah, this is this is our uh, demo for uh, like asset transfer. This is the basic principle what happens it's a, into the share market, like uh, in the stock exchange. So thank you. The next team would be Hackbit. Team Hackbit, you are all on the call. All of you are in the room now. So quick introductions, you will get six minutes for your presentation. Note that there will be hard stop exactly at six minutes. You won't be allowed extra time and then there will be three minutes for Q&A. Aishwarya, whenever you are ready. Or... Yes, sir. Now we set. Just okay. a second. So is the screen visible now, sir? Yes. yes. Okay. Um... Then we will be starting the um, the presentation. Yeah. You get exactly six minutes. Okay. Your time will start. Let me know when you want to start. Okay, okay. your time uh, starts. Okay. Uh, so good day, everyone. Uh, we are the group members, um, the team members, Anuga Joji, Ajay Sedni, me, myself, Anu, and Aishwarya Raj. I are members of the group name Hackbit, and we will be pre presenting our uh, topic, direct marketing and agriculture. Overview, what is DMA? A project which uses blockchain technology to avoid middlemen in farming sector and implement direct marketing between product producers and consumers, which in turn will provide transparency, security, and benefit both farmers and consumers. This will help farmers to avail more income and help consumers to get good quality products. These are our conscious, abstract objectives, hypothesis, literature review, design and methodology, work plan, and finally conclusion. Abstract. To create a supply chain management system for farmers using blockchain technology, this helps to secure and ease availability of crops produced by farmers to the market. It also ensures that farmers do, do get the maximum profit from the crops produced without the use of middlemen in between. We use Hyperledger Fabric as a platform to create the system, ensuring that goods produced are directly sold to the markets by the farmers. Objectives. The primary objective is to create a digital, platform, digital agricultural platform to connect farmers directly to the market so that crops produced is reached directly and sold out in the market for consumers. We also ensure that with the elimination of middlemen, farmers can sell the crops directly to the consumers and gain fair prices. How does supply chain of agricultural works. Farmers sell their crops to small traders, who in turn sell their crops to larger traders, and then the commercial agent, wholesalers, retailers, and finally in the hands of consumers. Middleman intervention results in raising prices for the consumers. Boosting the production of crops requires high cost, but they hardly get fair prices for the pro products from the middleman. The reason is that the real profit goes to the middleman, who buys the crops at low, low cost and sells them at outrageous prices to the consumers. This attitude of middlemen has discouraged genuine investors getting into agriculture because of the marginal profit associated with it. As the middlemen cart away the bulk of the profits. Thus, the activities of middlemen seem to be a threat for food security. Our goal of this project is to eliminate the presence of middlemen, thereby encouraging more farmers to produce more foods for the consumer at fair prices. As you can see in the picture below, 
uh, the agricultural growth in India has been definitely decreased over the years from 1951 to 2016. And in the uh, figure in the top right corner, when compared to other countries like China and USA, who are more science technology driven, the production of uh, crops such as wheat and paddy are much lesser in India, who is more agricultural focused. In the bottom right corner, the similar situation happens. Uh, where the agriculture per capita in India is much lower than the countries such as Thailand, China, South Korea, and USA, who are more technology driven. Here we formulated three main hypotheses, and the first one is supply chain planning process, where manufacturer or supplier need a wider view of global and domestic supplies as critical inputs for effective planning. And the uh, sub hypothesis come under this category is first one is supply chain planning process. And the second one is wider view of global and domestic supplies. And third is critical inputs. And fourth is effective supply chain planning. And the next hypothesis, next page. Next hypothesis, existing practices of supply chain planning need more number of iterations to protect interest of buyers and sellers than existing in practice. And the subdivisions comes under this is, first one is number of iterations, which determines the uh, consistency of the uh, consistency of the uh, project. And the second one is interest of buyers and suppliers. And third one is existing practices in mat matured product demand and supply. And the last hypothesis is, Roles of supply chain planners need to be strengthened with specialized skills mapping for effectiveness of companies. Next, please. And for this project, we perform a literature review based on these five projects, uh, which the first one is right, Tea Food, Agri 10X, Walton Chain, and Block Rain. Next, page. So now I would like to talk about the formulation of design or the methodology we are going to use in this project. The blockchain we are about to use is Hyperledger Fabric. Tools and frameworks used are Hyperledger Fabric, SDK, Node.js, jQuery, and MySQL. Programming languages to be used are Golang for writing the chain code, JavaScript, PHP, HTML, CSS. Okay, uh, now we are, I would like to talk about the methodology. We have an API where the user, producer, or consumer can log in or register if no account exists. The user-related information is stored in the MySQL database and the product-related information is stored in the blockchain. The producer is given option like check products, add product, etc. Whenever a new product is added, a product ID or QR code is generated. Producers can tag that QR code to their product. Consumers are given option like check product, uh, where on providing the product ID or QR code, and they can receive the entire details of the product. Next page. The whole process is handled by the chain code, which is written using Golang. When user logs in, the permissions are allotted accordingly as mentioned in the chain code. Producers and consumers can perform the task allotted to them. After the tasks are completed, users can log out of the system. Our major goal is to develop a decentralized end-to-end -end logistic application that stores the whereabouts of products at every flight hub to the blockchain. At consumer end, consumers can easily scan products to our code and get complete information about the provenance of their products. Hence, empowering consumers to only purchase authentic team, and quality products. Team Hackbit, I think your time is up. Um, so probably you should have shown a demo. If you have a demo, probably you can play that demo in the background. Let jury start asking questions. Okay, so... Um... Jury members, block hunters are not on the call. This would be alpha. Team okay. number 13. You will get exactly six minutes for your presentation and the demo included. Make sure you complete that within six minutes. There will be hard stop at the end of six minutes and three minutes followed for your Q&A. Okay. Alpha? All right, sir. Mm -hmm. Your time will start. So good morning, all. Today, me, Team Alpha from St. Kitts College of Engineering are here to present on our ongoing project, BlockFQ, a blockchain-based food quality assurance. The group members are myself, Prasit Prasanna Kumar, Thomas P. George, Sandra Meren Sabu, and Nidhu Velsavinu. Now, uh, next slide. Okay. Now, the food safety, stand, uh, the food safety and standards authority of India 
has named Kerala as one of the states that ensures food quality. But even though, when, uh, when compared to others in the list, Kerala still serves uh, unhygienic and polluted foods. And not only that, people around the world are becoming more and more aware of the health and fitness. They're being, aware, uh, they're being cautious of what to eat and what not to eat. So there should be a platform to validate the quality claims that are made by the hotels and also to monitor and ensure the food products. Next slide. So coming to a proposed solution, this is the architecture that we have come up with for Block FQ. It mainly has three components, the, uh, the web interface, the uh, mobile application, and an IoT device. The web, uh, web, uh, the web acts as an uh, integrated supply chain mechanism. The IoT device, on the other hand, is used to automate uh, certain processes for the hotels. The mobile application, on the other hand, is used to um, um, the mobile application, on the other hand, acts as an incentive mechanism for the hotels. The blockchain here acts as an interface. Mm, yeah, pretty much that's it. Um, and the next slide. So, coming to the web interface, um, we can say that, as I said earlier, it mainly handles the supply chain, and the transactions uh, will be logged using the uh, uh, distributed ledger technology that is the blockchain. And this web interface is used by the manufacturer, the distributor, and the hotel management. And the hotel management uh, can update the details as and when they consume into the block uh, uh, using this particular system. Also, the uh, IoT device is connected with the website um, that is including the RFID to retrieve these uh, details at various terminals. The website also acts as an inventory, uh, as an inventory management system for the hotel. And they have to, suppose the product is there for the hotel, they have to update it every 24 hours uh, as and when they consume it. So there's also a smart contract put into play that activates when there is a product that, uh, that is there in the hotel and it has exceeded its self life. So, uh, when this happens, it will be sent to a food regulatory authority and they can come and uh, check uh, check um, in the hotel or take it out or something like, do something about it. The web page will be developed as a DAP. Then coming to the next one, that is the mobile application. Okay, the mobile application uh, mainly acts as an incentive mechanism for the hotels but also it uh, allows the customers to give their reviews and they'll be being able to order food is just an adi uh, additional mechanism but main thing is that they'll be able to see the food ingredients from each hotel like from where their, uh, their point of origin they can confirm this using the mobile application so thereby you can ensure the traces and, and hotels um, in the app will consist of all the hotels in the nearby area this is for the presentation right now, and for the going for the demo right now, I, Thomas will be continuing with the demo. Hello. Yeah, we can hear. You. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. So uh, this is the web interface that we have developed, which is the primary interface to our supply chain. So due to time constraints, we were only able to create the web, uh, web interface part and not the mobile application on the supply chain. So how this works is that there are mainly three entities here, the manufacturer, distributor, and the hotel itself. So upon clicking a manufacturer, each the manufacturer, distributor, and the hotel will have a separate login page. And upon logging in, the hotel, uh, the manufacturer can see a list of products that he has. That is the outer package details. And he also has an additional option to add a package to his company. And further than that, upon clicking each product, he will get a list of items which is present in this database. That is each product's RFID, its quantity, the manufacturing date, and the expected expiry date. Here also, we have an option to add more items to this category. Now. Um, that's it for the manufacturer part. And for the distributor part, we again have a login.
and here the distributor can enter the details regarding the product which they receive from the manufacturer its rfid the product name the date upon which the uh, distributor picked up uh, the product or the date upon which he delivered the product and so these will also be stored into our database so uh, this is all that we had have created for now uh, thank you yeah, next yeah. name Go is ahead. code code her thing team number 15 okay so code her thing team you will get exactly 6 minutes for your demo and presentation make sure you complete your demo your whatever you have covered for your showing to the jury panel within that time and then you will 3 minutes timer for q and a will start okay thanks sir okay uh, let's start good morning everyone i am shreya suvarna and along with nidhi singh we are representing team code her thing as a part of geo family we are working on world's largest blockchain platform we would like to uh, platform for regulating sms of 1.2 billion indian mobile users here we would like to show you how blockchain can be used for public health so let's start with the problem statement as you all know that vaccine distribution against covid-19 has started in india for few months now this is known to be the largest ever vaccine drive in the history of mankind even interpol has reported that black market will be very large for these vaccines if counterfeiting of vaccines takes place it would result in various health issues on the consumer and since vaccines need cold storage without proper track and trace currently 6.5% covid vaccines are getting wasted in india and these are not our hypothesis it is actually happening as you can see the facts here for all the problems we have come up with a solution and that is covax chain an ai plus iot plus blockchain solution it will fill in all the gaps in the supply chain here we have used blockchain for creating transparency every participant can track and trace the supply chain and get to know the provenance of the vaccine also ai is being used for eliminating counterfeiting and ensure smart vaccine distribution and iot sensors will ensure that vaccines are transported in cold storage which will in turn minimize the wastage as you can see here the overall impact of covax chain on the various stages that is from the production to their last mile that is consumption by the consumer now let's move on to the solution architecture here we have three layers that is the front end back end and the blockchain layer the front end is built with angular and back end includes rest services written in golang the blockchain layer is be, uh, being used uh, here the hyperledger sawtooth is being used for blockchain as this fits our use case due to its consensus algorithm and scalability as well as good performance so for interaction between the back end layer and the blockchain layer we have used sawtooth golang sdk having said that now let's move on to the demo yeah so there could be various other participants in the covax chain but for the sake of simplicity we would be showing it just for three major participants that is manufacturer distributor and retailer so let's get started with the manufacturer's login now we could create a package on behalf of manufacturer so the iot sensors would be used for capturing the temperature and humidity of the vaccines here we are providing a threshold value so if this value is being crossed then the iot sensors could send a signal in and we could know that the package is not being shipped or stored in the right conditions so let's submit the data so here we are getting a unique package identifier and then we land back to the home page these are all the package details which have been created by the manufacturer at the very top you could see the entry which we, which we just created so here the status of the package is created now let's move to the distributor's login for the demo purpose we have kept different web applications for each of the participants but in real life we would be integrating covax chain with the existing system so let's log in using a distributor so this is the page where the shipment details would be shown for a particular distributor so at the top we could see the same package id and 
let's go ahead and create a shipment. So artificial intelligence would be used for uh, stopping the counterfeiting of vaccines in the sense that we could scan the, we could track the location from which scanning is done. And if we find that scanning is being done for a particular vaccine from multiple places and very frequently, then we could be assured that something is wrong with that vaccine QR code and counterfeiting is going on. So that could also be eliminated. So once we have filled the data from the distributor's end, we get a pop-up saying that the shipment has been created. And as we can see in the shipment details page, the status earlier was created. Now it has changed to shipment initiated. Now let's move to the retailer's flow. Let's log in with the retailer. Yeah, so we can see at the very top the same package. Now uh, for the demo purpose, what retailer would have to do is he would to enter this data manually and acknowledge that he had received the package but in the real life, uh, this could be done through the QR code scanning. So once QR code is scanned, uh, the details would be updated on the blockchain. So let's get ahead and submit the details on behalf of retailer. So this shipment has been received. Now let's move to Sawtooth Explorer. Yeah, so we can see this is the payload which we just created. And these are some of the other transactions. So here we can see after retailer has received the package, the status has been changed to receive. So the journey of COVAC chain doesn't end here. Once retailer is having the package, this could be sold out to customer. And at that time, the status would be changed to delivered. So customer is having a vaccine now. So he could scan the QR code, which would be present at the end of the vaccine. And he could track the provenance of the vaccine and he could also get to know at what conditions the vaccine was being shipped to him. Time's up. Okay. So yeah, that was the end of the demo. The no. next team coming in would be Electrust. So team Electrust, you're all on the call. So you get exactly six minutes for your presentation, including demo. So make sure you show important aspects of your presentation or the demo within that six minutes. And you get three minutes for Q&A. Your Q&A will start immediately after your main presentation. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm ready, thanks. Yeah, you, you may start. Yeah. Okay. Thank you everyone uh, for giving us this opportunity to present our solution at this event. Today, we, I will be presenting my team's submission, that is Electrust. But before that, let's take a step back and double click on the problem statement. So a couple of weeks back, you know, we looked at the suggested problem statements in social impact category and were fascinated with the idea of increasing the election's integrity and voter right protection using the technology. When we look at the state of elections, there are a lot of guidelines and procedures to ensure the integrity of elections and protecting voter rights. Yet, it is very common news in major democracies across the globe where candidates are crying foul and doubting the integrity. Among the major challenges in the process, we picked a few to solve, like ensuring that the records are tamper proof, prevent voter fraud, and increase trust in elections. Various enterprises have come up with blockchain-based solutions to conduct elections, and those have been tried as well in different parts of the world. But yet, they rely on a governance body or a neutral third party which owns the solution or having a split of you know, servers across you know, Azure and AWS and, and you know, similar. So that is where you know, our solution is unique. So we intend to prevent voter fraud by primarily using voter biometrics so everyone can cast their own ballot only. Second, the, the solution uses hyperledger fabric to provide transparency. Since any number of people, even the candidates, can create a node and share the ledger and thereby tamper-proof records. Also, we would be recording the voter identification and ballots in encrypted format on the ledger. But the main challenge here is that anyone with the node would also hold the ledger, which contains the ballots casted. And no one should be allowed to see who casted the ballot and for whom. For this to happen, what was required was a technology which could 
treat even the host as malicious and still guarantee the safety of data. That is where confidential computing comes into picture. So this confidential computing is also referred to as secure enclaves or trusted execution environments. So secure enclaves require specific hardware which have a portion of the CPU reserved for hosting enclaves. This reserved part is not accessible to any program or code running in the non-reserved part of the same hardware. So for the hackathon, we have used Azure, which provides Intel hardware compatible for hosting such secured enclaves and are attested to be secured by Intel. Each enclave, actually, you know, when it gets initialized, it generates a key pair right to for the asymmetric encryption. It creates a public, it shares the public key with everyone, while the private key always remains within the enclave, not shared even with the host or the owner of the program. Any data or code thus residing within the enclave is secure. Also, the Intel has a registry which checks and attests any enclave to be secure, right? So our process has, is a, you know, our solution is a four-step process. Starts from voter registration, purpose and candidate registration, casting the ballots and telling the votes, right? So uh, let me, you know, show this uh, from uh, in, our, in our demo. So for the purpose of this uh, in, uh, presentation, I've recorded the demo. So here, you know, our process starts from capturing the voter biometrics during registration. So encrypt. So here we encrypt the biometrics using the asymmetric encryption and record them on blockchain. Having biometrics encrypted using enclave public key means no one other than the enclave can see or use them for any purpose other than you know what is intended. Right. The next step would be having the voting purpose and candidates registered on blockchain in readable format. So here we you know we are doing that. Next is you know casting the ballot on the D day, right? So let me just move on. Yeah. So here we are going to cast the ballot. So casting the ballot is a two-step process where you know we validate the voter and its identity and finally issue a ballot token. The validation ensures that the voter identity is matched um, against their biometrics on the ledger, confirming that he's eligible to vote. And second step is, you know, using that ballot token and voter choice and encrypting them in asymmetric encryption and recording them on blockchain. Here, since the ballot is encrypted, even anyone with access to ledger cannot ascertain the voter choice. Also, the enclave keeps a list of voters who have been issued a ballot and ha have since voted. So the last step would be counting the ballots. So here, you know, the voter cast the vote. And the last step here is casting the ballot. Uh, Munesh, can you please uh, switch on the machine? I uh, lost my uh, electricity. And, you know, uh, so... In the last step, what would happen is the chain code will actually send, uh, stream all the uh, ballots from the, uh, chain code would stream all the ballots from the ledger over to the enclave where enclave would decrypt them and start the counting and finally publish the results. Thus, this solution boasts of improved security, increased transparency, tamper-proofing of records, and trusted execution, uh, trusted election results. So. So overall, you know, this solution, what it did was use Hyperledger Fabric, despite, you know, uh, being a shared ledger, it ensured that there, it is secure because all the records were on the ledger and were encrypted using that asymmetric encryption key generated, you know, shared by the secured enclave. So all right. in all, this solution will give you the required security, level of trust, transparency, Time. immutability, Time, and your elections. Thus, protecting you know voter rights and election integrity. Thank you. The next team would be Genesis. So, team Genesis, you are on the call. So, Neil, I think you are the only person from the team, right? And you get exactly six minutes for your demo and presentation included. You sure. you will be short notified. I mean, you will be hard notified at the end of six minutes, and you get three minutes for your Q and A. Uh, hello, everyone. Good morning. Good evening. Good night, jury. So. Uh, I'm, I'm a single one-member one, one member team. Uh, 
So I, I took up uh, plastic pollution as a major, uh, which is a major environmental concern right now, as part of uh, my uh, use case and try to address it. Um, so I strongly believe that we do have a uh, lot many environmental concerns or problems uh, to be solved uh, before we actually uh, move on to uh, major issues. Until unless we re resolve or address these environmental concerns, uh, someday or the other we'll have to pay a hefty price for what we are letting things go now. So I want to see this, uh, 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 the, the solution for this plastic pollution from two perspectives. One, from a local strategy, like for a, for a city or for a municipality, how to address it. And if at all you want to take this uh, solution globally, how do you want to look at it? So it's, it's like to start with, I'll be uh, 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 starting it uh, with a local strategy and move ahead for, with a global strategy. So I named uh, our team Genesis. Uh, we all know that Genesis is the first block of any blockchain. I want to be the first step in solving this uh, big problem. Problem statement, we all know. Uh, it's been ages since we are looking at this problem. Um, uh, the plastic pollution ca causing multidimensional da damage for land, water, and air. Few alarming facts mm -hmm. that the moment I looked at it, uh, I have been uh, thinking about uh, uh, a solution since then. So few things, 500 billion single-use plastic bags which are being used every year. And on an average, 15 minutes is the life cycle of a, of, of a plastic bag, which would the moment it goes on to earth, it stays for a millennium. 91% of the plastic so far created has not been recycled. And the plastic will outnumber fish by 2050. And the major cause of cancer constituent benzene is part of uh, plastic. So victims, every living being, uh, it's not just humans on this earth. So what's the solution for it? Can we ban it? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't say we can clearly ban it because of multiple reasons. Economical, cheap uh, uh, alternative for plastic is yet to be uh, found out. So the only solution for now, feasible solution to control this is to recycle. Have we not been doing this? Yes, we have been doing this uh, again since ages. Why are we not able to completely uh, get this problem out? Let's look at the existing recycling uh, mechanisms and challenges involved in it. If you look at the uh, fundamental flow of the recycling procedures, the major challenge is the uh, uh, collection of plastic at the first instant itself, right? So. The levels of plastic that is getting collected is very meager, and we are not able to control the levels of new plastic that is coming into this world because the demand for the recycled plastic that is being supplied to the manufacturers, one-time plastic product manufacturers, is really not on par with the uh, global demand. So what, what are the challenges? Why are we not able to collect it properly at the uh, source? And why are we not uh, being able to... Uh, uh, stop the plastic getting onto the landfills, water and everything, right? Culturally, there are two things uh, the whole uh, world is looking at. The, either you penalize people who are not socially concerned and discarding plastic like anything, or in certain geographies, we, we look at uh, incentivizing socially responsible um, groups of people. So though we have these two things as a solution, why again are we not able to implement them properly? The challenges uh, in terms of, from a strategy standpoint, penalties or incentives uh, both work good, but we do have certain in implementation challenges, right? So we don't have a mechanism to efficient, e efficiently uh, execute either penalties or incentives, right? If we want to award a person who is responsible in discarding, uh, it, it, it has to be completely manual so far. If you want to penalize, how are we going to track who is doing what, who is discarding what, which, which organization or which manufacturer is getting uh, more plastic onto the earth? So to address these two things, I see the blockchain being a one-stop solution as of now. Uh, in terms of a technology platform, if you look at the reason being the value it programs within it and the ease with which it lets us to exchange the value for something 
that we get into the system is great and and, and it, it is efficient so at a high level uh, the highlighted part or the portion of the whole plastic life cycle is what this solution is looking at majorly for now uh, for, for for the scope of this uh, demo it's the plastic collection how do you efficiently collect plastic without uh, uh, getting that discarded to landfills so the we do have multiple stakeholders like ngos transporters plastic collectors and segregators recyclers uh, pra- plastic product manufacturers resellers and at the core we do have uh, people like rag pickers individual households uh, apartment complexes generating this plastic so at a high level when you look at the blockchain as a solution why is it so unique right now i can take a, a blockchain solution for this issue right i so nil time sir okay so uh, the major issue uh, involved here right now the crux of the strategy is to how to uh, how to how to incentivize with the help of a erc20 token and how do you create a value to it there are two factors of which one it's a function of two things majorly when you look at locally it's the local plastic rate uh, along with the uh, uh, offset that you need to add to it to make it uh, look creative in terms of an exchange uh, 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 medium so i want to create this offset i want to uh, add the value to this offset from the plastic product manufacturers right so the inherent value of plastic plus the offset that i want to uh, put on the plastic manufacturers all together i want to make the collection or uh, 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 collection of this plastic uh, lucrative uh, in in developing economies rack because of the ones that we are completely forgetting to look at the next team would be sanguine team sanguine you both are on the call hi hello good morning good evening we are team sanguine uh, so uh, we propose uh, our idea for uh, specially tailored for chronically ill patients so our platform is uh, called uh, sanguine uh, it's a decentralized uh, matrimony uh, social media platform uh, inspired from uh, today's social media platform but uh, built specifically for uh, terminally ill patients uh so uh, this is what we'll be uh, discussing today like what are the pro- uh, problem statements which we have and then possible technical solution and technical approach and followed by a demo and a q and a so uh, we have uh, the problem faced by uh, terminally ill patients specifically are like uh, they have a social stigma attached to their health condition once anyone is diagnosed with any of the terminally ill ca- diseases like hiv cancer or mm-hmm. any such disease any such diseases uh, they do have a kind of a social stigma they are rejected from a normal uh, social life oh. they are uh, segregated in a way they feel uh, depressed uh, they have a very poor health tracking and also the medical facilities around the world are not up to the mark um, so they have very poor health tracking and uh, it's even more difficult uh, if someone wants to uh, someone suffering with such diseases wants to get married finding a life partner for them who is medically compatible so that they can also lead a happy life and also their offspring also uh, can be uh, of good health so finding such a partner is a very difficult uh, problem so uh, these are some of the things which uh, the current social media platform uh, platforms or the matrimony science doesn't provide out of the box so to uh, provide such a solution what we build is a centralized uh, decentral completely decentralized secure anonymous platform uh, wherein all the users are trusted and verified uh, then also we provide a better uh, platform for health tracking and also uh, provide an option uh, wherein they can tokenize their health records um, and exchange with uh, the research organizations or people who want their health records and also ensure that their records are safe and uh, private so how do we uh, build uh, this particular thing there are three main features one is a uh, user onboarding uh, when whenever uh, any person who wants to onboard to the platform this is the onboarding process wherein a person would share is a uh, 
personal information is medical history and uh, health records so this can be done in two ways uh, one is uh, let's say if the system or the person is not tech, uh, or a platform where he is using may not be technically mature so you can just use a smartphone uh, capture the photos and share it to uh, the hospitals who are connected to our network so we use combination of hyperledger indi and fabric for our solution wherein hyperledger indi is used to uh mainly pseudonymize the user and provide zero knowledge proof as and when uh, the request is made so uh, if it is option 1 uh, if there is a simple approach wherein uh, there is uh, the it systems are not that mature you can use a simple paper based take an image and share it uh, uh, securely or else if it is uh, if the system is already acquired if the hospital and the person who is enrolled is already in the system uh, then they can use uh, decentralized dids um, and uh, claims and certificates for uh, sharing it or uh, sharing the records digitally and uh, the hospital here would act as a checkpoint hospital or ngos who are uh, pre authorized uh, they can uh, validate the person's information uh, the medical health records and see whether uh, the person is uh, actually suffering from this particular disease and need some help or is uh, someone who is looking for based on the verification if the verification is success then uh, there would be a pseudonymous id which would be created followed by a document vault uh, which would be specifically uh, assigned to a particular person to store track his health records and also a digital wallet followed by an approval to join uh, the community so here what we do is let's say a person is uh, group we group them based on terminally uh, the, the disease which they are suffering from let's say cancer belongs to one particular channel people suffering from hiv belongs to a separate channel so that way so basically uh, this is what a profile would look like so uh, once a user is very fine you'll have uh, a wallet assigned to him uh, then uh, there would be a pseudonymous id there would be no way uh, anyone can get their personal record and this is the hospital in which uh, they are working on and the different um, uh, records whatever the personal information we have along with uh, tracking or usage of their health records where exactly they have used this is how the uh, person is onboarded once a person is onboarded uh, we have uh, built a, a machine learning algorithm a very basic uh, decision tree based algorithm specifically for um, uh, people suffering from a uh, different stages let's say if they are suffering from hiv they have different stages right stage 1 stage 2 stage 3 so based on their blood count and the current medication we build a compatibility score uh, with their health record so a person sends a connect or uh, if uh, we check uh, the other person who has uh, shown interest of for getting married so we send a connect then uh, both can share their uh, medical records to an a uh, medical professional he can uh, get the records uh, uh, quickly from the system uh, which is all uh, digitized by this time and then uh, he can view all the health records and recommend whether they can proceed with their wedding or if they want to have some uh, prior tests or medications he can give the recommendation based on which both the people can take an informed decision so this is how a uh, compatibility score works which is a combination of machine learning as well as blockchain where the data is shared and a trusted uh, and persons are uh, in the loop that is what uh, we try to build here this is what it would look like wherein a person uh, they would get a uh, very basic information none of the until they are connected and accepted they don't get a uh, much in detailed information wherein they can send for a reject or uh, accept or get married so this compatibility score is uh, based on a machine learning model which will check their health records and give the compatibility score and um, they can also go for a secondary medical opinion before taking the final call time and, time sir yep and the last part is the uh, secure information exchange wherein uh, they can upload uh, medical records uh, here we have built in our own uh, uh, specialized algorithm which is based on afgh uh, we use afgh and in a, just the way how blockchain works a cryptic curve algorithm uh, wherein all uh, records are dynamically uh, or uh, encrypted uh, using a uh, different key so even if a, a private key or a public key of a person is uh, shared only one record may be accessed but uh, each time we create and new ids and we have a separate key management agent for storing the records and retrieving it so this is what uh, a record uh, would look like let's say uh, a hospital uh, national health research wants their monthly uh, response to a particular tablet so the person will have complete access on whether he can approve or reject in this case once a a uh, record is approved the hospital can view a particular record so here each hospital uh, will have uh, their health record along with the access key wherein they can uh, view this access key to download the uh, 
else record, decrypt it and view it. So these are the three uh, main features features of our uh, platform wherein a person can get an history of which health record was added when and a complete uh, consent given so this was team sanguine okay thank you thanks for the time uh, thank you the next team would be team ionites I'm letting team Ionites into the call. I would like to thank um, for giving us this opportunity to present here um, ourselves. I'll not take much time on this, but um, uh, a big thanks to Hyperledger India chapter for organizing this event. Uh, title we gave um, to our submission is uh, Blockchain in Public Health, Reimagine Credential Verification and Trust Trustless Access. Uh, because um, we are present we are presenting a use case uh, where um, a solution where it can be used in various use cases where data needs to be protected and used wisely as per user's consent. So there are, um, we are team Ionites. I have my um, uh, teammates, Sairanjit and Amit Padmani with me and myself, Ankita. So the problem statement um, here, now we are showcasing two, um, uh, we are showcasing a solution uh, for two of the problem statements that were given. First is to prove vaccination status. And the other one is opening up the workspaces, schools, colleges uh, in a safer manner for children and everyone. So um, as they say, says a coin has two sides. So as with the digital era, uh, it gave us an, um, a, enormous opportunities, facilities to share, get and monetize our information. Uh, helps in being connected with each other, everything in few clicks and whatnot. But there is a darker side of it that caused Facebook data breach 2019, Aadhaar data breach 2018, Marriott data breach, MGM, Zoom, Big Basket and whatnot. Uh, in recent, in February 2021, 2.3 billion record um, uh, are breached MobiQuick data has leaked. Uh, COVID-19 test results of Indian patients are leaked online. So uh, hence users' privacy is on stake in every domain we take, in every manner the data is there out on the internet. So these are the problem statements. These are the problems, pinpoints that we have with the technology, that the way we work, we, the way we store our data. So how to enable security and privacy preserving access in this COVID era, since health records are very sensitive uh, and um, very sensitive in uh, information a person can have. So uh, like identity is the most important yet vulnerable in today's world. That's, um, that's least I can say. So the proposed solution for uh, the state the problems, the statements that, that I have given. Uh, the solution that we are proposing uh, comes with the power of blockchain, backed by cryptography, W3C standards for verifiable credential, and it is leveraging Hyperledger India as a blockchain and ARIS, uh, Hyperledger ARIS as protocols. So the, so the solution we propose uh, is where every credential a user hold can be issued as a verifiable credential or can be converted to a verifiable credential. So verifiable credential, they comes with a security by default. They are by design, by design secure and uh, put user in driver's seat of its data. Um, we called is at, uh, call it as self-sovereign identity where it is self-managed and self-organized. Uh, we took the solution to the next level and we integrated uh, IoT device with Hyperledger ARIS agents. So we gave uh, IoT devices a capability to uh, play with and to use verifiable credential uh, as and when needed. Uh, this is a solution which is applicable to several industries, but we are presenting as uh, uh, the public record or the um, health record management one. So uh, this is the proposed solution we have. Uh, next come up is the solution, solution architecture of uh, our system. 
so there are multiple components uh, of the system we sorry so we are using uh, uh, all the open source uh, hyperledger projects and open source platforms uh, we are using credible platform and a dea mobile app and a raspberry pi you can see if all of them in the um, in the architecture that i have shown so the credible platform it is built on top of open source hyperledger projects that is indi aries and ursa and it is built focused uh on building a decentralized identity system where you can exchange you can use uh, verifiable credentials a dea mobile app is built for the holders to store the credentials securely and with all the w3c standards and the standards that are laid down in the industry for using verifiable credentials and uh, this mobile app uh, gives a capability to present out the proof as and when needed out of the credentials that user is having then the next is raspberry pi that is the one feature that is cherry on the cake of the solution uh it is a low cost credit card sized single board computer uh and we have loaded this with hyperledger aries agent that gives it as a capability to cryptographically verify the proof generated by the holder so it has all the facilities to issue as well uh, to issue a credential or to verify but we are using it for the verification purpose so uh, the digital handles that we will talk in the in the demo or going forward uh, on the smart doors should be backed by this raspberry pi agents so this is what uh, uh, the architecture of the solution is so credible platform is uh, all on um, cloud environment and so we are, we are using google cloud environment for this every application all the um, systems which which will be on the consumer side they have their applications running on um, the native systems and they will um, have their cloud agents on in the um, um, google cloud all the agents will talk to the secure blockchain are, ledger that is hyperledger indi and it will talk to the mobile wallet we are running out of time your time Already? is up actually oh. yeah. sorry yeah so i, I would like um, um, uh, sai to take up the solution uh, the benefits of this uh, the solution that we have proposed okay so uh, in this demo as we discussed we have uh, three three main uh, issuer and verifier we can say simply they issue the credential so main use case we are demonstrating is we are converting our national id aadhar card indian national id aadhar card into the verifiable credential so in this case user first will uh, download this uh, offline aadhar card from from the uh, ui uh, ui uh, di website so simply they will enter the otp which they received in mobile phone and also set the some passcode to access this file something like that so so once when once the otp is verified simply we can a user can upload this zip file uh into the mobile application we are uh, checking the data by verifying the passcode and mobile number which user enter so once aadhar we have in our hand then we are uh, we are verify by by verifying the passcode and the mobile number which enter by the user and the user simply apply uh, apply for the Uh, for the pass, uh, aadhar card as a vc so simply currently we are apply we have one issuer uh, name is bank of future so simply they will uh, they will uh, issue this credential so holder is requested to aadhar vc and now we are going to issue this uh, pc to the to the holders so once uh, once the offer is sent successfully to the holder holder will simply accept this offer and store this uh, this uh, digital uh, credential in his wallet so whenever the need simply they can uh, they can uh, verify this data so if i go forward fast because we are running late of time so now now in the case that uh, we have we have our uh, we have our covid credential vaccination credential so simply again uh, in the covid credential uh, generally we are, we are giving the uh, all country are giving the qr code so qr code has contain some data so again we are converting this uh, uh, qr code into uh, this uh, vaccination data into the vc so by scanning the qr code we user will get the data and again apply for the for the uh, digital vc so again the medi lab care is a uh, issuer for the uh, for the vaccination record so here ajay nagar is requesting for the credential but before the issuing the vaccination credential for example now uh, medi labs wants to verify his aadhar record as well so simply they just generate the proof request over the 
presentation section so simply they select the credential which they wants to verify apart from there is also yeah so basically the use case we are demonstrating here is a uh, is a uh, converting the national aadhar uh, uh, into the verifiable credential so there is a use case that we have uh, another uh, credential there is a vaccination record so again we are converting this uh, this vaccination certificate into the verifiable vc and apart from we have added the iot layer over over the over over the our solution so where we have have a iot door handle kind of thing so simply they yeah it's hosted by credible team itself um so, so we, we are, are using this one. yeah so yeah. blockster labs which from uh, which we are presenting um it has developed credible and adaya platform both and uh, we are using the hosted solution uh, so again uh, we have received the proof request on on the user's wallet so simply i will uh, uh, so user will send his aadhar uh, record to for the verification so once uh, verification is completed so medical labs will issue this uh, requested credential to the holder's wallet so holders have now now to two credential there in in his wallet simply so now uh, again uh, as we discussed we have use case that uh, once the uh, covid go on and we want to secure entry to the employment so that's why we uh, add one another layer over there so blockster lab is a uh, is employment where user is doing his job so simply let move forward so again blockster lab uh, will issue one more credential it's employment vc and when when user wants to, access the office door at the time they need to present this kind of credential so simply we are again issue one more credential to to the to the user so in mobile we have also received the employment card as well so we store this credential in our wallet so right now we have two credentials so now i if if i, I go to the blockster office and i i i its iot door is present and now i want to uh, uh, provide the vc that i have a national id card i have a covid vaccination i done with covid vaccination and i have a valid employment id to enter into the office so simply when i go to the office simply i will scan the qr code which they have on a door so simply will receive the proof request so i will the requested data is a vaccination certificate uh, vaccination name from vaccination certificate name from employment card and role from again employment card so simply uh, i will present this data from my wallet and once the data is verified we can see there is a green signal is uh, given that uh, i have a valid uh, credential to access the door so access will be granted to me now in future when when i resign the job from the blockster lab and now blockster wa uh, labs want to revoke my credential so simply they can easily revoke this credential so they simply uh, revoke the my employment id because they issued uh, the credential to me so again if i go to the blockster lab office and i scan the qr code again so again user will receive the proof request to present the credential so yeah uh, again uh, when i send the proof uh, from my wallet and it says that uh, access denied because the credential employment credential is issued by the, which issued by the blockster later on they revoke the credential so user cannot able able to access access this uh, a door no more so this is the use case that we have we have i will build over there so if we talking about the future enhancement so this kind of solution can be used by the hotel or uh, or other hospitality platform like uh, like oyo rooms and also where user when uh, where user can simply receive the uh, access credential of that door something like and also provide the national id as a verification even in this case stop. we can also use to